Okay, so for the second example, you should be getting the vertex is negative 1, negative 2. Focus, negative 1 half, negative 2. Axis of symmetry, y equals negative 2. Directrix, x equals negative 3 over 2, and it opens to the right. So let's graph this one real quick. You are going to have to do some graphing today. There are graphs already on your paper, so you're not going to need graph paper. But since my vertex is at negative 1, negative 2, I'm going to make my graph a little bit bigger in the um, fourth quadrant and a little bit on the first quadrant. So the vertex is at negative 1, negative 2. There's my vertex. And I'm just going to draw this all the stuff there that I have. On your assignment, just read the directions and follow the directions. So if it doesn't tell you to graph everything, you don't need to worry about it. Just graph their parabola, graph what they're telling you. So the, your um, axis of symmetry is y equals negative 2. The directrix is x equals negative 3 over 2, negative 1 and a half. And then your focus point is at negative 1 half and 2, so it's going to be right there. So let's get two more points for the parabola so we can get our shape. And since it's horizontal, I'm going to find two values for y on either side of the vertex since it's horizontal. So the first point you want to start with is the vertex. You always want to start with that one. And then I can go two up and two down for my other two y values. So I'm going to use 0 and negative 4. Okay, when I plug a 0 in to the equation up here, 0 plus 2 is 2, and then square that, it's going to be 4. 4 times a half is 2, and then 2 minus 1 is going to be 1. And I should get the same value when I substitute that negative 4 in. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2, and when you square that, it's going to be a positive 4. Times a half is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. So I have those two values I can plot, 1, 0, and 1, negative 4 and then I can draw my curve. And that's it. So you really just need the three points, okay? All right, let's move on to the next part. It says to put in standard form and then give the values above. But we're not going to give all the values above because we already did that, and it's just plugging values in. I think you guys are good on that. Okay, so on number one, y equals 2x squared plus 12x plus 14. So they want us to put it in standard form just to remind you what it's going to look like. I'm going to write standard form right underneath it. Okay, so this is going to be a vertical parabola. And um, the, to get this binomial squared, I need to complete the square. So, what first thing you want to do is group your quadratic term and your linear term together. You're going to put the constant like outside. You're not going to mess with it right now. Now, your quadratic coefficient needs to be a positive 1. So, I need to factor a negative 2 out of both of the quadratic and linear coefficients. Okay, so we're going to start with y equals 2 times x squared plus 6x, and I'm going to leave some space so I can complete the square. And to complete the square, I'm going to take the linear coefficient, 6, divide that by 2, so that's 3, and then square it. So I'm going to add 9 inside the parentheses. Now I'm not really, it's not really a 9 because I have this value outside the parentheses that's multiplying everything. So uh, what I actually have is 2x squared plus 12x plus 18. So I'm actually adding 18, right? Okay, so to keep this all balanced so I'm not changing the value of the equation, if I add something in the parentheses, I have to subtract outside the parentheses. And I'm working all on one side of the equal sign, so that's why I'm doing opposite operations. Add inside, subtract outside. So what do I need to subtract? 18, that's right. Okay, so now I'm ready to factor this perfect trinomial square. And to remind you how to factor that, you're going to take the square root of your quadratic term, so that's just going to be x, 
take the square root of your constant, so that's going to be 3, and then whatever your linear sign is, is what goes in the middle. And then combine my like terms out here, that's minus 4, and I have it in standard form. So you know that what the vertex is, you know what A is, just from looking at the equation. You know what, if it's going to open up or down, sideways. You should be able to tell that just from looking at the equations. Okay, so let's look at number two. Number two, 3x minus y squared equals 8y plus 31. So do you think this is going to be horizontal or vertical? Horizontal because the y variable is the one that's squared. When it's vertical, your x variable is the one that's squared. Horizontal, y is squared. So I want to get the 3x all by itself. And I'm going to add y squared to the other side. And I'm not going to do anything with that 3 until the very end. Since I don't have a coefficient in front of my quadratic term that's not a 1, I can just group the quadratic and the linear term together and complete the square. So I'm going to take my linear coefficient, 8, divide by 2, and then square it. Okay, so I'm going to have 3x equals, and I'm going to put parentheses around my trinomial that I'm going to get now. I'm going to add 16 to get that perfect trinomial square, and then I need to subtract what am I going to subtract now? 16. Right. Okay, so I can factor the trinomial, combine my like terms. I have 3x equals y plus 4 squared plus 15. Okay, so it's almost in standard form, and this is where I want to divide everything by the 3 now, so it'll just be x all by itself. Okay, so the 3's reduce out, and you have x equals. Now, instead of writing this as a binomial over a number, I'm going to pull the fraction out, make it 1 -third, because that's what your a is, is that 1 -third. Okay, and there you have it in standard form. Any questions? Yes. How would you put that into a graphing calculator? Now, well, sometimes the calculator can convert over to where it's x equals, but if you don't have a calculator like that, you really can't. I mean, you could use a radical, but, you know, it's kind of a challenge. You could. You could do that. Also, some of your calculators have a conic um, application, and so you can graph those by using that, not by going to the y equals screen. All right, so let's look at down at the bottom, number six. On number six, they give you a vertex point of 2, 1 and a focus point of 2, 6, and they want you to write the equation of the parabola. So we're going to need the vertex, which we already have, which, so that's good, and we're going to need the A value. So we're going to have to work to find that one. Okay, so um, first thing you want to find out or figure out is this a vertical parabola or a horizontal parabola? You're given the focus and a vertex. What can you look at to determine if it's vertical or horizontal? Okay, so I know that for the focus, either the x or the y is going to change. It looks like the y value is the one that's changing, right? So looking at the equations that you have for the focus, if it's a vertical parabola, the y value is the one that you have to add 1 over 4a to. So this is going to be a vertical. So when you write your equation, it's going to be y equals. In fact, I can go ahead and write y equals, and I'm going to leave a space for the a. And it's going to be x minus 2 squared plus 1. Okay, so for your focus... It's h and then k plus 1 over 4a. So I'm going to use that k plus 1 over 4a to help me solve for a. Now I know that whenever I do this operation, it's going to equal 6 because that's the end product. So I'm going to set it up 6 equals k, which is 1, plus 1 over 4a. 
Okay, so I need to subtract the 1. 5 equals 1 over 4a. And I'm going to put that 5 over 1 so I can do my cross products. I have a proportion. So I get 20a equals 1. a equals 1 over 20. So now I have my a. I can put it in the equation where it belongs. And there's my parabola equation.